so we'll see what are wrapper classes in java the use of a wrapper class is very simple say you have an integer primitive data type int a is equal to 2 it's a primitive data type right this is not an object so you can use a wrapper class to convert an integer primitive data type like this to an object not only an integer any primitive data type what are primitive data types you can think of float long short byte boolean all these primitive data types you can use wrapper classes to convert them to objects so i'll give an example here what is this wrapper class so this int int is a primitive data type it's not an object so i declare int a is equal to 2 can i perform a dot something only when i have an object i can perform or invoke the methods for the object here this is a primitive data type you don't have any methods but i can convert this int primitive data type to an integer object like this that is integer is the class name it's an inbuilt class in java it's a wrapper class object is the object name new integer and then i pass the primitive data type now this object takes the value 2 i can perform object dot there are certain methods attached to a wrapper class object so you can call that say here the object dot to string i can perform what it does is it takes the integer value 2 converts it to a string so what is a wrapper class it is a class that takes up a primitive data type and then it helps you do certain operations using that primitive data type it's a class that wraps around a primitive data type say before i created a wrapper object i was not able to do a dot something but after i made it as an object i can perform call all the wrapper class methods here one important method i given you i can convert the integer value to a string so why we should convert a primitive data type to objects next question why should you convert a primitive data type to an object because there are certain frameworks collection frameworks structures in java data structures in java which can work only with objects you can't store primitive data types in a collection framework obviously we didn't finish collection frameworks so we'll be learning collection frameworks later on so you can work with only objects like integers objects like float inside uh, this collection framework but you can't use primitive data types int or float which is a primitive data type directly so that should be a conversion and objects are needed for synchronization multi-threading in java there is a concept for multi-threading we don't have that in our syllabus but multi-threading in the sense you access an object say an object is a location in memory multiple threads can access an object so when you go in for synchronization it's like which thread will be accessing that object so again you need an object for thread synchronization that is another use wrapper class methods help us to convert from one data type to another say i can convert a string to integer i can convert an integer to string that kind of things i can do java generics works only with object types so you would have learned the generic uh, in c++ too right you write a class that is generic class that can work with any data type you pass in so generics also work with objects so there is a there are places situations wherein you have to convert your primitive data types to objects and use that's when wrapper classes help us so when you have a primitive data type what is the corresponding wrapper class for that say if i have int i can convert that using an integer int can be converted to an integer object so this is an object this is not an object likewise short can be converted using this short what is the difference here you have a small s this is a capital s whereas this is an object likewise long so we have wrapper classes for every primitive data type boolean boolean say character you can convert that like this byte the capital b so whatever you give here a is equal to 2 this is not an object whereas when you do integer a is equal to new integer of 2 this a will become an object you can call all the wrapper class methods for that object so these are the advantages so we have seen the wrapper classes available declaration of a wrapper object say if i am creating an integer object a what will i do is i will pass the integer value i'll use the new keyword integer a is equal to new integer this is one of the ways to create an wrapper object if i want to create float how will i create capital f float k is equal to new float like that and then you pass the value here it's capital f 
So you create an object. So now k dot I can do certain things. A dot I can do certain things. I can call certain methods. That's the idea. There's one more concept called auto boxing. What is this auto boxing in wrapper classes? So earlier they were doing like this, right? Uh, you see integer a is equal to new integer and you pass the value. Now auto boxing is I just give the class name integer k is equal to directly the value. Now this value is taken and an object of type integer k is created. So this is auto boxing that is is the automatic conversion of the primitive types into their corresponding wrapper class. What I am doing integer is the class k is equal to 23. So 23 is the primitive type. Now when I assign it to k what happens k becomes an object. I can do k dot something. Automatically a primitive type gets auto box to a object. You can go for declarations like this too. Unboxing is there. Unboxing is the reverse of auto boxing. That is you can see here. What is that I am creating here? An integer object a which takes the value 52. Okay, what is an object? When I talk about an object, what is a actually representing? A memory location on the heap. It is a reference variable. That is it, right? What happens when I do a by 2? It's actually a reference on the heap. How can I perform a by 2? Will I even get an output? You will get an output. Because when you perform a by 2 for a wrapper object, what will happen is this a will be unboxed from an object to its value. So 52 will be substituted here by 2. So you will get the output. Here automatically it unboxes. When I do a plus 2, I'll get 54. Actually, what is this a? A is a reference, but a plus 2 is giving 54. Because this a gets unboxed as a primitive type. Whatever that value it has, say 52 will be taken and that will be substituted in the expression. So automatically unboxing also happens if you use a wrapper object. So now we'll see what are the wrapper class methods. I told you we have a wrapper object. I can do k dot and invoke certain methods. Most of the methods I used, uh, I focused on integer class methods. Let's take a look at this. Code for converting a wrapper object to a string. So you take in an integer and then you convert that to a string. So how I can do that? Say here integer k is equal to 23. How can I convert that to a string? integer right this is the object name dot to string so now it this 23 is assigned to a string i can print the length of the string that will be 2 so you can take an integer convert that to a string how will i convert object dot to string likewise you can take a string and then you can convert that to an integer this is very important. You can get the input as a string and then you'll be converting that to an integer. How this happens? Let me tell you. Say this user is entering a number and I am getting that number in a string. String number is equal to input dot text next. So this string number we have to parse it integer dot parse it num. So this parse it is a static method inside the integer class. What is the static method that should be invoked using the class name? So parse int is a static method. So I am using integer dot parse int. And I pass the string num here. So that will be assigned to a. So now a will be taking the value. If the user enters 2, when I do a plus 2, it will be 4 because it's converted to an integer. So you can very well ask me why are you getting the number as a string, then converting. You can get that as a number, right? Why you should even do this? See, that's where it totally depends on your application. When you're working with uh, text forms, form-based applications, whatever the user enters will be coming in as a text. So even when you ask him to enter the marks in a form, it will be coming in as a string. So what you have to do, you have to convert that to an integer for working on the marks, right? So what, what method you are going to call? Integer dot parsent. So parsent is a static method. So you have to call integer class dot parsent pass the string. That will be converted to an integer. You also have some more static methods wherein you will be able to find maximum of two objects. See, actually here I am passing two integer values. Integer is the class name dot max of 2 comma 3 will return 3 because this is finding max. The same way you also have a method a static method in the integer class to find minimum. 
So you pass two integers, it finds minimum, three will be the output here. These are some methods inside your integer wrapper class. Likewise, you have a method for dot sum. What is the use of this dot sum? You pass two integer values, it will return the sum. How will you call the static method? Class name dot method name. You don't create an object to invoke sum, it's just class name dot method name. So what will be the answer here? It will add 23 plus 45 and return the answer. Comparing two wrapper class objects. Very good question. Say, I create an object A. What I assign here? 52. I create an object B. What I assign here? 52. What I am checking? Is A double equals B. What will be the output here? The output here is false. Why the output here is false? Again, I told you A is a reference, B is a reference. They are referring to two different locations. So A equals B will be false. So you can't compare two integer objects like this. But you can compare two primitive data types. Int A is equal to 2, int B is equal to 2, like A double equals B. Primitive data types, it's fine. But with objects, you cannot do this. So how to compare two objects? You have to use equals method. So here I have created this object 52, new integer 52, a dot equals b. So it's a boolean method, it will return true. What happens if one object is greater than the another object, one object is lesser than the another object, or both these objects are equal? How will you compare that? So you have to use compare to method of which class? The wrapper class, here I am using the integer wrapper class so here you can see this is 52 and this is 52 a dot compare to b so it's comparing both these objects they are equal 52 values are equal 52 is equal to 52 so the output will be zero you can compare two objects like this integer objects likewise let's take scenario 2 a is less than b that is integer a is 51, integer B is 52. Now when I perform A dot, A dot compare to B, what will be the output? Output will be less than 0, like minus 1, you will get the output because A is lesser than B. How I make the comparison? A dot compare to B. What is the last scenario? A greater than B, say A is 52, B is 51. A dot compare to B will return an output greater than 0. So you will get some 1 like that. So that will be the comparison. So when you are working with objects, you have to use a different set of methods. When you are working with wrapper classes in specific. Finally, we will look at this method using the value of method. What is the value of method? It is nothing but integer dot value of you can pass a year or 23 year. So it takes that value assigns to this object. So it's going to be an object with the value 23. So there's the dot value of method wherein you can pass the primitive data type. It takes that value assigns that to your B, which is an object of type integer. Uh, are you all having some idea about wrapper classes now? What is a wrapper class? It's a class that takes in a primitive data type. And then it helps you work with the primitive data type. It converts that primitive data type to an object. Here we have seen examples for integers. Like that you have float, double, short, long, boolean, character. You can explore those methods too. So there are a lot of methods in the integer class. Say if you are interested in learning all the methods of the integer class, how you can learn, show you this. How you can learn all the methods of the integer class or any class. You can go to your Eclipse type integer, control, open declaration. Now you will see the source code for integer. See, this is the integer class and then you will see the source code for an integer class. So integer, inside this, if you want to find the max or min, those methods, you can very well find that. You search for sum. So sum, so you see here. I told you sum is a static method inside the integer class. You can very well see this is public static int a int b returns a plus b. So this is the source code for your static method inside your wrapper class.
So you can very well look at the source for any of the classes available inbuilt in Java. Only thing, you type the class name, control, open declaration, you will be seeing the declaration. But there is one step here. You have to attach the source code to your Eclipse to view the source. 